Welcome back, Questers, to our routine of opening the scriptures, aka Roots. Let's continue exploring the story of the Bible. Genesis 26, here we come! Oh, hey, and welcome back, Quester community. Day 26 of our Quester Roots, our routine of opening the scriptures. As you know, God's word is a lamp to our feet. It's a light to our path. And if we're gonna be Jesus' disciples, we really need to know his Bible. And if we want our lives to bear sweet fruits, we need our hearts to sink deep roots into his word. So Questers, let's get rooted. Genesis chapter 26. Now, there was a famine in the land beside the previous famine in Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you and will bless you. For to you and your descendants I will give all these lands and confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and will give them all these lands. And through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed me and did everything that I required of him, keeping my commands and my decrees and my instructions, so Isaac stayed in Gerar. When the men of that place asked him about his wife, he said, she is my sister, because he was afraid to say she is my wife. He thought the men of this place might kill me on account of Rebecca because she is beautiful. When Isaac had been there a long time, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked down from a window and saw Isaac caressing his wife, Rebekah. So Abimelech summoned Isaac and said, she is really your wife. Why did you say she is my sister? Isaac answered him, because I thought I might lose my life on account of her. Then Abimelech said, what is this you have done to us? One of the men might have well slept with your wife and you would have brought guilt upon us. So Abimelech gave orders to all the people, anyone who harms this man or, or his wife shall surely be put to death. Isaac planted crops in that land and the same year he reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. The man became rich and his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. He had so many flocks and herds and servants that the Philistines envied him. So all the wells that his father's servants had dug in the time of his father Abraham, the Philistines stopped up, filling them with earth. Then Abimelech said to Isaac, move away from us. You have become too powerful for us. So Isaac moved away from there and encamped in the valley of Gerar where he settled. Isaac reopened the wells that had been dug in the time of his father Abraham, which the Philistines had stopped up after Abraham died. And he gave them the same names his father had given them. Isaac's servants dug in the valley and discovered a well of fresh water there. But the herders of Gerar quarreled with those of Isaac and said, the water is ours. So he named the well Esek because they disputed with him. Then they dug another well, but they quarreled over that one also. So he named it Sitna. He moved from there and dug another well where no one quarreled with him over it. He named it Rehoboth saying, now the Lord has given us room and we will flourish in the land. From there, he went up to Beersheba. That night, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bless you and will increase the number of your descendants for the sake of my servant Abraham. Isaac built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord. There he pitched his tent and there his servants dug a well. Meanwhile, Abimelech had come to him from Gerar with Ahuzah, his personal advisor, and Phicol, the commander of his forces. 
Isaac asked them, why have you come against me since you were hostile to me and sent me away? They answered, we saw clearly that the Lord was with you. So we said, there ought to be a sworn agreement between us, between us and you. Let us make a treaty with you that you will do us no harm just as we did not harm you, but always treated you well and sent you away peacefully. And now you are blessed by the Lord. Isaac then made a feast for them and they ate and drank. Early the next morning, the men swore an oath to each other. Then Isaac sent them on their way and they went away peacefully. That day, Isaac's servants came and told him about the well they had dug. They said, we found water. He called it Sheba. And to this day, the name of the town has been Beersheba. When Esau was 40 years old, he married Judith, daughter of Beri the Hittite, and also Basemath, the daughter of Elon the Hittite. They were a source of grief to Isaac and Rebekah. The grass withers and its flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. <sighs> Genesis chapter 26. Some more big questions swirling around. I wonder what your questions are. The big questions I have about this one is, is God's blessing only prosperity and increasing of wealth? It seems like so far, every time that Abraham and Isaac and others have been blessed, it means being multiplied and fruitful and gathering more herds and wealth and livestock and territory. But that doesn't exactly sound like the kind of blessing that Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount, that blessed are the poor in spirit and the mourning and the meek. So what's with that? What does the word blessing really mean? That's my big question. My other question is this. I wonder if Abraham knew that his sin of not fully trusting the Lord and putting his wife Sarah in danger's way, I wonder if he knew that that would be a sin and a pattern that would get passed down to Isaac. Because in this chapter we read, that's the exact same thing Isaac is doing now with his wife, Rebecca. He's going around saying, she's my sister, she's my sister, instead of saying, she's my wife. He's trying to protect himself and putting his wife in harm's way. Hmm. I wonder how parents and their sins and choices can affect children. What are the big questions that you have from this chapter? I'd love to hear them. Write them in the comments below or write us a letter and send it off. You can find our address on our website, questercommunity.com. Today, I'd like to give a big ginormous thank you to our Quester investors, Nick and Marin Thomas, and their kids, Everett, Emmy and Isla. Thank you so much for being Quester investors who believe in this project and give to the gospel work we're doing. Hope to see the rest of you Questers tomorrow for Genesis chapter 27 as we root ourselves in God's word. We are on a quest to read the scriptures. <laughs>